All right, guys, so we're going to make this pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to talk about epistaxis. So this is something which is common, which, which we usually see in the emergency department. Um, so just to um, basically kind of figure out where usually um, you epistaxis occurs, it can either be anterior or posterior. If it's anterior, um, usually 90% of the bleeds occur anteriorly. Um, it's going to be in Kesselbach's plexus. Um, for the posterior bleeds, you need to consider most likely the sphenopalatine artery. Um, or it can actually be the carotid artery. In regards to the etiology uh, for the anterior, can you guys hear me if I step back or no? You, you can hear me if I step back? Yeah. All right, good. It's more comfortable that way. So um, if it's an anterior bleed, um, in regards to the etiology, uh, usually it occurs most likely by some type of um, nasal trauma. So usually if somebody's coming in nose picking, that's most likely um, the cause, but they won't inform you of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it can also be uh, due to like <laughs> it can also be to like a low moisture uh, content so um, if somebody's in like let's say an air conditioned room um, that can be a reason for it um, mucosal hyperemia so a lot of individuals with like um, rhinitis they can come in especially like um, just due to irritation of rubbing their nose and so on they'll develop these uh, nasal bleeds Additionally, if you have somebody who comes in, let's say, with purulent discharge, but they also have nasal bleeding, you should consider a, maybe a possible foreign body. Um, additionally, most uh, facial trauma, which you will see, um, it's most likely an interior bleed and not a posterior bleed. And lastly, uh, you want to consider intranasal drug use. So uh, for multiple uh, cocaine abusers and so on, which we see at Jacoby, um, that could be their reason for bleeds. Um, posterior bleeds tend to overlap with the anterior bleeds. Um, a lot of individuals which are on anticoagulants, um, that could be a reason for it. Osler Weber Rendu disease, um, this is a common reason for epistaxis. And these individuals, when they come in, they're very difficult to actually control. Um, so they usually re require um, a significant amount of uh, like management, including possible ENT. You also need to consider um, individuals that may have like hemophilia or von, von Willebrand's disease. Um, a lot of posterior bleeds also have are caused by aneurysms of the carotid arteries. And these individuals usually have some type of procedure which was done, um, usually by ENT, or they may have had some type of uh, facial trauma which caused this. Um, but the majority of posterior bleeds are spontaneous bleeds. Additionally, um, you always need to consider like a na nasal neoplasm which can occur and that'll be a posterior bleed as well. Hypertension, this still goes back and forth from in the literature. There's really no indication, that, there's really no information which states that hypertension causes um, epistaxis. But a lot of times for the ENT docs, they will still attempt to decrease the blood pressure um, before they manage the bleed. Um, for us, we usually don't do that. We just uh, directly manage it. CHF can be a cause as well, and um, alcohol as well as uh, intranasal steroids. So for the evaluation of these individuals, um, if they're coming in, of course they look um, severely sick, then ABCs are always our primary uh, evaluation. Um, you want to do a thorough history, so for the information which I provided before, that is something which you want to uh, take into account. And in regards to labs, you want to do it in relation to the patient's history. So of course, if they're on anticoagulants, then you want to consider possible PT, INR. Um, if they're having significant hemorrhage, you want to get a CBC um, and type in screen as well as uh, two double bore IVs. So for physical exam, um, you definitely want to anesthetize them. We don't always do this, but it can be painful to evaluate the uh, patient. So you may want to consider a lido, lido with epi, or um, like 4% cocaine. Um, but you want to avoid uh, topical phenylephrine. <laughs> um, there you go. I'm serious. That's, that's serious. I'm serious. You can use that. It's actually used by ENT quite often. Um, we don't have nasal spectrums um, in the emergency department, but that's the best way to visualize uh, where the bleed, bleeds may come from. Um, so the other thing you can use is an autoscope speculum. Lighting, of course, is uh, something which is important, and suction. So the initial management for most, like, for most anterior bleeds, um, you want the individual to actually blow their nose completely out. You want to make sure that all the clots are removed um, from within the nose and then you, um, you want them to grasp the ally. A lot of people tend to tell them to grasp the bony portion of their nose, but that's not the correct um, method to actually doing this. And you want them to actually hold this for about anywhere from 10, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and then you want to go back and reevaluate them. Um, it is option, optional to use Afrin, 
um, usually two sprays in both nares. And then there's also like other met methods which individuals have used. Um, and you can use like any antibiotic ointment or the cocaine, as I said, and you put it on the cotton wools of widgets and you place them in the nose and then you can actually hold a cold compress on the outside of the, the nares. If, if that doesn't, if, that, if you're unsuccessful with that method, um, but you do visualize the source, then you can also use um, cautery, which is uh, usually silver nitrate. That's going to be your chemical method. Um, and this method, you, when you're doing it, you actually want to place it on the site, which you want to go more so um, peripherally to medially. Um, and it's only for about 10 seconds. Um, you'll visualize the area actually turning um, like a whitish color. Um, but you want to make sure that you don't leave it on for too long because you can cause ulceration and perforation. Um, and if you do bilateral um, size, then you can actually cause necrosis. So you want to avoid that as well. And for most likely, whenever you're doing um, cautery and it's electrical, usually ENT does it um, because there tends to be a lot of complications with that as well, such as uh, perforation. So um, if you're doing any type of nasal packing, um, you always want to consider giving something because the patients can be a little, uh, they can have some anxiety, um, but you want to consider either like a nasal tampon um, gauze packing or a balloon tampon. We tend to use the balloon tampons in the emergency department. This is best for like unskilled physicians. Um, <laughs> um, and so you just want to remember that you want to wet these prior to actually uh, placing this in the, in the individual's nose. And as well, um, you don't need to put any Vaseline or anything on it because if you place Vaseline on it, it actually has a, a material which causes um, the areas uh, where the blood is actually occurring to to basically constrict, so you actually remove that, you remove that chemical. So you want to make sure that you don't place anything on top of it. The gauze packing is actually like an old method, um, so that's one that we don't use anymore, really. Um, also, you can consider nasal balloon catheters, uh, but this is usually used for posterior and anterior bleeds. And there's really no difference um, in any of these methods um, for controlling uh, either epistaxis or the reoccurrence of rebleeds. Um, you can also con consider thrombogenic foams, bless you. Thrombogenic foams or gels. Um, Quicksil and flow seal are um, actually used. These ones, um, it's actually been found that a lot of physicians tend to, tend to enjoy these more because they, they actually will prevent, prevent the reoccurrence of bleeds um, better than actually the, uh, the tampons. Um, you can also use Surgicel in gel form, and now TXA is actually um, beginning to be used, but it's most likely when you have severe um, severe bleeds. If it's uncontrolled epistaxis, um, you, know, you notice that one, si one side is packed and it's not working, then you consider using bilateral nair packing. Um, and th this patient is most likely going to come in due to just monitoring, uh, but if all that fails, then you have to consider a posterior bleed and possibly an ENT consult. Um, for posterior bleeds, you want to either use a balloon catheter. Um, a Foley catheter, which is either 10 or 14 French, um, or cotton packing. As I said, usually cotton packing is not used. Um, it's shown in the slides A, B, and C. Um, it's kind of like a method where you're putting like this uh, catheter throughout the nose, and you're attaching, you're attaching a gauze to it, and you're pulling it back so it can go against the post, the posterior pharynx, and then you'll attach one actually um, over the uh, the the entrance of the nares to prevent it from falling out. And then usually these people will double pack. They'll actually have an anterior um, packing as well just to make sure that they're, um, they're covering both bleeding sites. So for the dispositions, if it's just a primary epistaxis control and these individuals, um, it stopped with just the initial management, you can just observe them for 30 minutes um, and then discharge them essentially. You can tell them um, to just put um, antibiotics on for three times a day for the next three days. If you have packed them, um, there's always the consideration of antibiotics, so it still goes back and forth in the literature whether, whether it's vital to use this or not, but uh, we still tend to use it to prevent uh, TSS or um, secondary bacterial sinus infections. And you want to cover them for the amount of time which will be left in, in the, in the nares, so it's 24 to 48 hours, and then follow up with ENT. Um, and if it's a posterior bleed, then they're going to come into the emergency department. They're going to come into the hospital. So take home points. Um, don't forget your ABCs for the ones who are coming in um, with a severe hemorrhage. Always attempt initial management. Um, and lastly, be aware, of product, be aware of the products which are available to you in the hospital. So if you have tampons versus um, if you have like Surgicel or um, TXA. And that's it.